And to preventing a third wave, joining us right now from our Abuja studio is Dr. Yahya Disu, who is the head of Risk Communication Division with the NCDC. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. All right. Now, just before we delve into COVID-19 proper, just um, want to hear from the NCDC. And this is following the update on monkeypox uh, based on the index case who reportedly traveled from Nigeria to Atlanta. Uh, what is uh, okay. the NCDC um, hearing about this? The necessary things we have to do is to follow up and uh, with the state where this case was reported, and that is being done. Even before now, uh, monkeypox has been part of our routine surveillance, and then uh, uh, there is what we call enhanced surveillance, which we have also started. And in the states with high risk, um, um, we have been reporting more of these cases, uh, like in River State, in uh, Akwa Ibon, and then also in, uh, in the South South region, Baeza State. So uh, efforts have been ongoing to ensure that uh, this is uh, detected. Uh, I also, uh, across the states in the country, there is also surveillance for uh, monkeypox. And personnel have also been trained uh, to ensure that uh, they are able to detect uh, these cases. But what we also need to do is to report, uh, to encourage community members to understand the signs and symptoms so that they can report as soon as uh, they see this. Uh, so I think uh, that is the hub data we can provide now. All right. Um, on COVID-19, Lagos has been witnessing an increase in daily cases, uh, over 100. How much of the rise is as a result of the Delta variant? Well, um, it's too early to say this is the proportion of the Delta variants in the Lagos State COVID-19 reported cases. But uh, you can, if you remember, a couple of days back, the Commissioner for Health for Lagos State was also talking about uh, different variants that they have in the state and they are strengthening the uh, interventions, non pharmaceutical interventions, the surveillance, even at the point of entry to ensure that they're able to detect uh, new variants that come into the country and to also prevent transmission of uh, existing variants uh, in the country. So it's too pretty early to know what proportion of the cases that this variant is. But uh, the variants they are picking, they are doing genomic sequencing for all the cases uh, to be able to actually uh, describe or understand what variants uh, they have in circulation. And staying with Lagos, Dr. Disu, a week ago there was this fear, anxiety over how the University of Lagos shut down hostels due to the coronavirus threat. Um, on that situation, um, especially with how they went about it, uh, what is the latest in terms of uh, the cases emanating from the school? And based on the guidance that the NCDC has put out there for schools on the COVID-19 public health measures, um, those procedures, were they in the best interest of the students and the lecturers? Anyway, uh the situation in University of Lagos last week is a learning curve, even though there are better ways to handle such situations. Uh, because uh, closing down the school suddenly is not in the best interest of uh, the school itself and the community. We understand the affairs. Uh, it also shows that uh, we need to strengthen preparedness uh, in our higher institutions. Uh, what it means is, uh, first I want to commend them for, able to, for them being able to detect this early and then to be able to also make sure that uh, uh, they warn the students, because according to a report that we got, they tried to warn the students since the students were adamant, they were not compliant, that's why they have to take that decision. But that would have been better if the decision was taken in conjunction with the State Ministry of Health uh, that have the state COVID-19 response system and so that they can be part of the wider response. Uh, with regards to the guideline, uh, the guideline specifies that each school or institution should have a committee, uh, the school health committee or COVID-19 uh, response committee that will be working with the state team. And in terms of surveillance, if they see cases, they report. And then the state will be able to come to support them. Uh, that way, when the state is responding, it's not just the state. Uh, it also includes the national support. So uh, those are areas where... We need to work, we know that uh, we don't want this to be uh, repeated in other institutions of learning. Uh, we're trying to work with the stakeholders of higher institutions 
uh, to ensure that um, all the relevant stakeholders come together, they understand this guideline, how they need to implement them, how they particularly need to work with the state, uh, the state ministry of health, who are leading in this COVID-19 response uh, in the various uh, states where these higher institutions are uh, situated. So uh, it, it's a learning curve for us. Uh, we continue to see how we want to uh, improve on this situation. All right. We would like to appreciate your time on the program. Dr. Yahya Disu, Head of Risk Communication Division with the NCDC. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.